We started talking about potential functions and conservative vector fields. We took a look at some visualizations in 2D. Remember that a vector field like F is called a conservative vector field if it is the gradient of some scalar function. What's the meaning of that? It means that there exists a function, a scalar function like f, such that the vector function f is equal to the gradient of that scalar function. In this situation, f is called a potential function for vector field f. And remember that not all vector fields are conservative vector fields. We also went over a quick review about the definition of gradient. When you're forming the gradient of a function, you basically form a vector function. Let f be a differentiable function at point x and y. Then the gradient of this scalar function at x and y is a vector valued function. The gradient of f or nabla f is, since it's a vector, it has vector symbol. The first component is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And the second component is the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which in turn can be written as partial derivative of f with respect to x in the direction of x-axis plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y in the direction of y-axis. So far, we check if a vector field is conservative or not. Now our goal is to find that vector field. So these are the quick notes that we just reviewed. We have a vector field given to you as 3 plus 2xy in the direction of x-axis plus x squared minus 2y squared in the direction of y-axis. And our goal is to find this potential function. So if you have a potential function, finding the vector field, as we saw, based on the definition of gradient is super easy. However, if the vector field is given to you, how do you find that potential function, the scalar function? First of all, remember that the partial derivative of that potential function with respect to x is the same as the first component of the vector field. So you're going to copy this guy down here. Nothing is changed. If you take the integral of both sides with respect to x, because it was the partial derivative with respect to x, now we take the integral with respect to the same variable. It's going to be the integral of 3 dx, the integral of 3 with respect to x, so it becomes the integral of 3 dx plus now you're going to take the integral of 2xy, the integral of 2xy with respect to x. So as you can see, we are going back to elementary calculus and calculate these integrals. The integral of f of x is function f at x and y. So the integral and the partial derivative with respect to x intuitively they get canceled out. It means that you end up with function f outside this integral. On the right-hand side, the integral of 3 dx is 3x, and the integral of 2xy dx is x squared y. But what is the constant of integration? The constant of integration is a function in y because if you take the derivative with respect to x this is going to be 3 this is going to be 2xy and the derivative of gy since it's a function in y taking the derivative with respect to x it disappears perfect this important pieces students usually get confused why we have a function instead of a constant like k it's because you are taking the derivative with respect to x it's a partial derivative so 
Now, instead of writing just one constant, you're going to write down a function in Y because when you're taking the derivative with respect to X, this guy disappears. Now, take the derivative with respect to Y of this function. F of Y is the derivative of 3X with respect to Y is zero. The derivative of X squared Y with respect to Y is X squared. And the derivative of GY is G prime of Y. So from this function, this potential function that you're building, now you're taking the derivative with respect to y. Why is that? Because based on the definition, f of y, the partial derivative with respect to y is the same as the second component of your vector function. These are the same thing. So we already have a partial derivative with respect to y. We also calculated the partial derivative with respect to y. They must be equal to each other. So set x squared minus 2 minus 3y squared to x squared plus g prime of y. Now you can get rid of common terms on the left, on the right, because if you just bring x squared to the other side, it disappears. x squared minus x squared is 0. So now you have g prime of y equals to negative 3y squared. These two must be equal to each other. Now, if you take the integral of both sides with respect to y, g of y is negative 3, negative y to the third, plus constant of integration, which is k. Now, just substitute this guy back here, right? Our goal was to find this potential function. So the potential function is equal to 3x plus x squared y plus, instead of just g of y, you're going to write down negative y to the third plus k. So that's how we found the potential function, which is just written here. Again, if you take the gradient of this function, you build this vector function.